So Tesla has begun shipping vehicles with hardware for the Model S and Model X have come with it since March of 2023. And the Model Y, which you see behind me, has come with it since about May of 2023, give or take a month or so there. And what I have behind me right now is a hardware four Model Y on this side, a hardware three Model Y on this side. And what I wanted to do in this video is compare the quality of the cameras because the cameras in the hardware four vehicle are vastly improved compared to the cameras in the hardware three vehicle. Also a camera has been removed we're gonna get into all those details. I was just about done with this video and then Tesla released an update, full self-driving beta version 11.4.7, which I'll put the version number right here. And that update actually made the cameras in the hardware three look better. <laughs> so you have the repeater cams that pop up, your blind spot cameras. Those looked very yellow and kind of not very good and didn't look very true to life. Well, with a software update, Tesla has updated those repeater cameras and perhaps the front facing camera as well, but it mostly seems like the repeater camera to look a lot better and look more similar to hardware form. So I filmed a lot of this before that update, but I went out and redrove and refilmed uh, the sentry mode footage to make sure I could compare the latest update to the Model 3 software to what we have on hardware 4. And while it does look more similar, I can tell you in person, in car, when you're using uh, those blind spot monitors, it's still a lot better on hardware 4, although hardware 3 does look so much much better than it used to in the past. Now, does this have anything to do with full self-driving? Probably not. I think this is mostly just an aesthetic change, so it looks better for the person in the car, but it is a very welcome improvement. I was happy to see it, but just keep that in mind. I will have all the footage labeled, so you'll know if it's from hardware three before the software update or after, or if it's from hardware four or whatever, but I just wanted to kind of do this before I put the video up because things changed. So if you have any questions, leave those down below. Hope you enjoy this one. We have recently taken delivery of a brand new 2023 Model Y, and there's a surprising amount of differences from our 2021 Model Y that we picked up just a couple of years ago. But in this video, we're gonna be focusing specifically on the new cameras that are surrounding this car and inside this car. So first up, starting on the exterior, the look isn't too different, although the cameras are different on the outside here. So when you look at the top, let me zoom in. So I'm having some trouble with the clouds. I can't really see behind the glass, but I'll put some pictures up. On the Hardware 3 car in the top here, right above your uh, rear view mirror, there are actually three cameras in there. Uh, narrow, uh, average, or whatever, and then a wide camera. Those are all in there. And then here, you only have two cameras. And when you look at the picture, it looks like there's three, but one of those is actually a dummy camera. Tesla is probably using up the rest of the housings they have to save a little bit of money before they switch over the rest of that hardware. But one of the cameras in there is a dummy. The other two are real. Over here, there are three real cameras that are used at all times. All right, so checking out some of the footage you can expect from these hardware four cameras. Now, keep in mind the resolutions I have at the bottom are the files you're getting out of your Tesla cam in sentry mode. It's not the resolution of the camera. The camera resolution is much higher than what's shown here. These two videos were taken seconds apart. I was driving the hardware four car. My wife was driving the hardware three car. So lighting is exactly the same. The traffic conditions are very similar. Uh, it's just a few seconds apart. You can see the quality of hardware for is just so much better. It looks so much more real. You have way more pixels in this file that you're working with. And keep in mind, if you're coming from a hardware three car to a hardware four car, your flash drive for sentry mode is going to fill up really fast. And I didn't realize this was happening. So I had to keep redoing these drives because the files wouldn't save. And I was like, not knowing what was going on. Now, moving on to the dirt roads, I wanted to show this because Hardware 3 has always given me this weird, like boxy pixelation stuff when I record on the dirt roads and look at the footage. And I have had some cool footage of like deer and stuff that was just totally ruined. And you can see it here. Now, luckily, Hardware 4 doesn't seem to do this at least as much. I'm still seeing it just a little bit. I have no idea why this is happening, but the footage from Hardware 4 front facing camera is looking much better on these dirt roads and I'm very thankful for that. And then of course, nighttime. Now these two videos were taken maybe 10 minutes apart or so because I did both of the drives by myself, uh, but it was after sunset. And this is a pretty interesting one because the footage from Hardware 4, where the headlights are hitting, where it's lit up, looks much, much better. But the footage from Hardware 3, you can see everything uh, is kind of cranked up in terms of the brightness of the image. And you'll especially notice when we get to the repeater section that the Hardware 3 is much more noisy. I mean, it's insane, but it's a little easier to see. So overall, the picture on Hardware 3, again, you can kind of see more, but the quality is, is atrocious. And you can actually see some dead pixels in my video if you see those white spots in kind of the upper right area. That, uh, I have no proof for this, but I think it's from the LiDARs on the self-driving cars in the downtown I drive around in. I think those LiDARs have <laughs> blasted my cameras a couple times and killed some pixels. Again, no proof, just uh, kind of my thought. And then you can see how a stop sign looks at night along with another sign there and those poles. 
again, it, what you can see on Hardware 4 is much more clear, but it seems like you may be able to see some more on Hardware 3. And keep in mind, Tesla can adjust all of these things in the background. Now, when we come back here and look at the repeaters, on the right, again, is Hardware 4. On the left is Hardware 3. They look pretty similar, but the Hardware 4 cameras have two differences. Number one, when you look at these Hardware 4 cameras, they have a red tint to them. I don't know how well it comes across in the video. Um, there you go, you can see it there. And in real life, it is very apparent. It almost catches your eye that red is so bright. When you come over here to the Hardware 3, no red tint at all. The camera just, you know, looks like a standard little camera. When you look at the top view of these cameras, Hardware 3, I don't know how well this will come across, but I did take a picture with a measuring tape. That's just a little bit thinner than when you come over here to the Hardware 4. It does jut out and stick out just a little bit more. Now, the angle that you get out of here initially, I thought, was a little better, meaning the camera would see a little farther out rather than just behind, but it appears that they are similar, and we will be looking at footage from these cameras later in the video. Moving on to the repeaters, these are the cameras on the side of the car facing backwards. Not a huge difference now that Tesla has updated Hardware 3. Again, I think this Hardware 3 update was mostly for the human experience. I don't think it affects anything having to do with full self-driving. Full self-driving is already taking in like photon data, according to Elon Musk. And so I don't think the quality of the picture is all that important. Now, looking at this nighttime image, really weird again. It seems like you can see a lot more in the repeaters from Hardware 3, just, you know, from the files that I pulled from the car. But man, is it noisy. Look at all of the grain and the weird lines on there. I have no idea what's going on with all of that. But that's how it looks out of my camera when I take repeater footage from night. In the Hardware 4, it's much darker overall, but the image is a lot more clear. Now I'm gonna edit it here, and I'm gonna pull up the brightness myself and see how that looks. I am by no means a master at <laughs> editing or any of this, but what do you know, it kind of looks a little more like the Hardware 3 cameras, so really interesting to see that difference. Next up is B-pillar cameras. So you got a B-pillar there, and you got a B-pillar there. They each have cameras. Uh, from what I can tell out here, there is not much different besides, number one, that red tint. Let me get that for you. This is the Hardware 3, so there's no red tint. And if you look at the Hardware 4, you can see the red tint there barely through the glass. There you go, trying to get it to focus. And the camera lens on this Hardware 4 camera is definitely a little bit bigger and beefier. Very obvious in person, not sure that'll come across on camera. Now, coming around to the back of the cars, you can't see it from here, but they both have a rear view camera in the same spot as before. So let's check out the Hardware 3 here. And again, looking from here, you'll notice no red tint. And if you go to the side, just so you see it, that's what it looks like from the side here. Focus, please. There you go. And when we come up to the Hardware 4 camera, again, if I get the right angle anyway, you will see the red tint in there. Hopefully that's coming across on camera. It doesn't seem as bright as the repeaters, but it's definitely there. And when you look from the side, you can see that sticks out just a little bit more than the Hardware 3 camera, and it will give you a better view of side traffic. All right, now here's the one I'm the most excited for because I think it has the biggest difference in a place that's important. So looking at the rear cameras here, maybe just while driving down the road, you can't tell a massive difference in these two. The rear camera in Hardware 3 already looked great. The rear camera on Hardware 4 looks great as well. But looking at this still image here, this is where you can really start to appreciate the difference. So look at the edges of this image. If you look at the top, it looks about the same. In the bottom, I lined up with that line, so we knew we were looking at the same image. Again, these were recorded within seconds of each other, so lighting is the same and all of that. If you look off to the left and right, here's where it gets exciting. Look at the left. On Hardware 3, we cut off the line. On Hardware 4, you can see the entire line. The entire stop line is there, along with a lot of my license plate. You can see more of my license plate with this camera. Also off to the left, you can see a lot more of that building, and you can see the canopy for the gas pumps, which is absolutely not visible in the Hardware 3 image. And then looking off to the right on Hardware 3, there's a building over there that you can kind of see, and it's you're just barely in the image. On Hardware 4, the whole building is visible and you can see the prices of gas on the sign there. So the Hardware 4 rear camera is much wider, which I think is going to be a huge benefit for backing out of parking spots for either a human backing out, full self-driving backing out, or just rear traffic alert that will hopefully be added to the cars eventually. So we go from eight exterior cameras on Hardware 3 down to seven exterior cameras on Hardware 4, because again, the camera's in the front, one is removed from Hardware 4. The last difference here is gonna be, let me brighten this up for you, the internal driver monitor camera. So on Hardware 3, it's a bit smaller, and also on my Model Y of 2021, it does not have infrared lights surrounding this, and so at night, sometimes it can be a problem. Now, for me, it hasn't really been an issue, but I've heard other people complain that don't have the infrared lights, that sometimes they get a lot more nag because the camera can't see them when it's dark. 
One solution is to leave your uh, screen here on light mode to have some more light come from the screen and kind of illuminate your face. Not something I do, but something I've heard of. Now, you do not have to have hardware for, for this camera to have IR. I did not realize this, but uh, some 2022 and up Model Ys, I'm not sure exactly what month it started, but Model Y 2022 Hardware 3 will have infrared lights in this camera. All right, so hopping over to Hardware 4 now on the driver monitor camera. As you can see, the lens is slightly bigger. You don't see anything around it, but there are infrared lights that do pop on. Let me put the car in drive, but I think they only come on at night. There you go. So you don't see anything on the camera. I don't see anything in person. I have a picture I can show you. And even though in this picture, you're like, wow, that's a lot of light coming out of there. It is infrared. You cannot see anything. It looks exactly like this at night, even when those lights are on. So you can't even tell there are lights back there, but this plastic, I guess, is just kind of clear enough that the light does come through and help that camera. So here's our internal camera with hardware four. You can see the black interior and keep in mind the white interior is really going to actually help you here in terms of the visual and being able to see into the car. But we're in dog mode and you can check the interior camera. You can actually see a person walking back there. Not the best, uh, you know, bit rate or anything, but it looks good enough. You could definitely see people in the car and we can see all of the windows. You can see pretty much everything besides the windshield, which makes sense. It's a really good camera. You can see almost the full steering wheel, just barely cut off there. But if someone is texting and driving, or if this was a robo taxi one day and somebody was in here, you know, messing the car up, you would be able to see all of that. And moving over to hardware three. Wow. You can see much less in the hardware three vehicle. You can't even see the front driver and passenger windows at all. You can't see them at all. You cannot even come close to see seeing the driver steering wheel. The quality, even with the white interior, which makes everything a little bit brighter, is not very good. <laughs> There's much less bit rate. There's a lot less detail in everything like the seats. You can barely see the corner of the screen there. Overall, you should be able to still see all of the passengers in here, but the camera is just not going to be able to see quite as much. Uh, and you know what? I think some people might actually prefer that. All right. So hardware three, this is what you're going to get when you put the car into reverse. You can see your backup camera there. Now hardware four backup camera is not substantially better. This one's already very good. So it looks good, but you'll see when you look at the hardware four footage, you can see slightly more to the sides on that camera than you can see with this one in daily usage, just like backing up or something. I don't think it matters that much, but implications for a self-driving car could be important. Although when you get to the fringes of this really wide angle lens, like how usable is the footage? Well, that's up to Tesla. And then hopping over to the reverse cam on hardware four. Again, once you put the car in reverse, this will pop up automatically. You don't have to have all these cameras if you don't want. You can swipe it like that. But of course, I always keep them all up. The rear camera is not all that different because the quality of the rear camera on hardware three was already really good, but it's slightly improved. And like I said, you can see farther. Uh, hopefully you can even tell just from this video preview, but you can see farther to the sides with this camera than, than you can in hardware three. So the overall experience in the car, hardware four is an improvement. The cameras look better, things respond better. Now, part of that is because my car has the old Intel processor and hardware four, you don't need hardware four for this, but the newer Model Ys come with the Ryzen processor. Many of those, again, you have hardware three, you have Ryzen. Uh, so that experience will help a little bit as well. But the experience of looking through those cameras in the car and then recording footage of sentry mode or saving a clip if something happens is much better on hardware four, which we're gonna look at some of that directly now that I've kind of taken off the USB drive and put directly on the computer. It's actually pretty shocking some of the footage, how bad it is on hardware three compared to hardware four. Now, is this me saying like, wow, your hardware three car is garbage, you need to upgrade? Heck no. The experience is still great with a hardware three car, especially the backup camera is awesome. It's one of the best you can get. The repeaters are really the biggest improvement that's gonna be actually usable for the person. And then of course the front cam, when you save footage to sentry mode or whatever, that's an improvement as well. And will help with things that are farther away or getting correct colors. But overall, hardware three is still great. I would not say, you know, whatever you learn in this video is like saying, I'll oh, get rid of this and, and upgrade right away. But you will get advantages with hardware four that you don't have with hardware three. It's kind of just as simple as that.